Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Larry Sampson back for our Lunch with Larry series. Uh, today, we're going to talk about design transfer. So per our discussion last week with uh, Cisco Vicente and the FDA, we're going to dive into our operational excellence uh, right at the point where uh, things join uh, the manufacturing processes, which is design transfer. So today we have Jared Miller on the line. He's our technical expert. We'll talk a little bit more about him here in a few minutes. But I thought we'd just go ahead and dive directly into the topic this week. So Jared, maybe we can start with a little background that you could discuss uh, electronic design transfer steps uh, or the content and why are all these in, uh, elements in design transfer so important? So in, in a in an environment like this, a lot of times when we receive the data that comes in from a design engineering group, we would receive a, a bill of a bill of process, or sorry, a bill of material that comes from design engineering. And as you can see, for example, in this example, this happens to be the ventilator example we've been working with recently. The material is all laid into the bomb here in, in the way that design engineering viewed it, the, the way design engineering worked with that data. And when this comes in for manufacturing, it's not necessarily organized the way manufacturing needs to work with it or the way that the parts need to be consumed in execution or in the, in the downstream systems. So this is where we get into as that design data comes in. I'm going to actually load up that uh, that bill of material and I'm also going to load up a manufacturing bill of material that's been created uh, based on that data. I'm going to open them up side by side here. You can see that the engineering bill of material um, has is structured one way while the manufacturing bill of material has been structured differently. There's some different levels that's been created here, um, sub-assemblies that have been named. I've also just created just a couple just so you can see that there's some manufacturing MBOM uh, sub-assembly levels and that have these parts grouped differently and this is really as that design transfer comes in that data is able to be able to be brought directly from the e-bomb into the m-bomb but here in the active workspace uh an easy plan environment and team center we're maintaining that linkage from the engineering bomb into the m-bomb so as further design changes happen in the e-bomb we're able to pick them up and flow them right through the process through into the m-bomb and into the bill of process so the bill of process, what's the bill of process? How is the bill of process different than the manufacturing bomb? Well, so the, the, the manufacturing bomb is an organization of the structure. It's, it's an organization of the product data, okay? But it doesn't tell me what I'm actually doing with those things. It just says, okay, we'll group these parts this way, maybe split them out in different ways and organize them different ways, but it doesn't tell me what to do. The bill of process, if I look at easy plan, I happen to have the the bill of process here, this work package as we refer to it, easy plan. I'm going to go ahead and open it up here. The bill of process takes that manufacturing bill of material and turns it into a process that you're going to execute on the shop on the shop floor or at your environment or in your line or in your plant. Um, and this is organized into steps. So for example, say the, uh, the air system in the, uh, the MBOM here. I have an air system process operation here, and when I look at the air system operation, it's broken up into a set of sub-processes, things like cutting the tubes and assembling the tubes, assembling the noses and, and bringing the different pieces of data, and the parts from the MBOM are actually then consumed directly into the bill of process, so I know in which operation I'm consuming those parts. I can tell where I'm using resources, what types of fixturing and tooling, those are associated here as well. And I actually have work instructions with that I look at this um, when I can actually see the individual instructions for the operations and I can reference into the text and tell the operator what is being, you know, what, what steps are they doing? What are they building? What are they doing? And this has information associated to it as well, including um, uh, documents, instructions, uh, things like uh, pictures, nice pictures, and, as well as full live 3D views in the environment so that I can see the components, I can turn components on and off and things like that in the, in the environment here and actually tie my instructions to the three individuals that have been built in the environment. So that bill of process actually gives me what, what, what do they actually do on the floor? What are they actually gonna execute? It's also commonly sometimes referred to as a routing or um, just as the work instructions. And it's, the data is all integrated together. Again, as engineering makes changes, that same data flows into the MBOM and it flows on down here into the bill of 
process. There can be one bill of process or there can be multiple that, um, that, that might take up if you have more than one line that needs to be organized in different ways, things like that. Sure. So let me just uh, back up a little bit here for a second and say a little bit about the series. We have uh, Lunch with Larry, just so you have contact information for both of us. This is my information and the QR code to scan uh, or to provide any of your colleagues. If you'd like anyone else to be part of this series, be happy to have them do that. Of course, my contact information, both on LinkedIn or uh, phone calls, emails, uh, any way to get a hold of me that you like. So just so you know, this is part of the artifact that we uh, presented so you can download it. In addition to that, I, you know, just a little background on Jared. He's our solution architect re relative to manufacturing process planning. And these tools are really the easy plan and NX additive manufacturing. Maybe, Jared, you could give people a little background on yourself and kind of where you come from uh, so they have a, a sense of your technical expertise. Yeah, so I've been, uh, as I said, I'm Jared Miller. I've been working in the manufacturing engineering and, and design engineering space for over 20 years. I started back in 1997 working with some heavy equipment manufacturers. And in that time, I've been everything from a tooling and fixturing designer, NC programmer, and manufacturing engineer. Um, these days, I work as a solution architect here with Siemens, where um, anything to do with part manufacturing, whether that's NC CAM, type uh, machining in NX CAM, or whether it's additive manufacturing, those projects come across my desk and I help as both as a solution architecture where I design how and help assist customers in implementing that, as well as um, I actually you know assist with uh, you know getting more people for the projects as we do services implementations and directly help customers, not just pointing them to our software, but helping them implement our software. That's Team Center, Easy Plan, and, and, and the NX suite of tools. Sure. So maybe what you could do now is run us through an entire progression from uh, cr taking the uh, the engineering bomb, rolling it into a manufacturer bomb, and then the and the build process. Maybe you could just run sure. us end to end so we get a good sense of that. So taking a look at uh, this example here, um, inactive workspace. I have the E bomb here. I have the M bomb, and in this case here, there is some parts. If I scroll down. See if I can find them here. Uh, oh, I'm going to organize it by ID. It makes it a little bit easier just because I knew I know that ID numbers and I kind of know in the structure the parts I was looking for. Um, here's some uh, some valve parts here. If I want to take these from the E bomb and, and adding them into the M bomb, I, it's as easy as uh, dragging and dropping to add add here and and put those parts into the M bomb and those parts have been added into that assembly. If I wanted to add a new M-bomb uh, sub-assembly here, I can easily on the fly right here, add new children to the M-bomb. I can create new M-bomb sub-assemblies. Um, I can even create entirely entirely new bill of materials that aren't part of the same one. But this one's, this one's fine for what I'm doing. As I add those components in here, you can see that I can also move them around and restructure within this assembly. And it's just that easy to move it around. And it's a maintaining a linkage to the original engineering design. So it's that same digital thread flowing the whole way through from E-bomb into M-bomb. Once I've added those parts into the manufacturing bomb, I can go over into Easy Plan and I put on, I've got my manufacturing engineer hat on here. If I go ahead and I'm just gonna go back to home and I'm gonna reload my work package here so that it picks up those changes for me real quick. And you should see here, now that new parts and components that I added into the M-bomb are right here available. And I can immediately go ahead and um, assign those parts into, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and put that into the air system. And I wanna go ahead and take those parts from the M-bomb and go ahead and assign them right into the air system. And they are assigned there. And then as I go into work instructions, I'm able to go to that error system and I can see the list of assigned parts here in the work instructions and I can reference those parts here in my instructions. So a simple uh, taking a design part from the EBOM all the way right down into the routing is just a few clicks away and you're, you're ready to go. Now in this uh, simple example here, um, I may be jumping the gun a little bit, but I think you know we we had a redesign that may have happened that has happened on this part. I think this is the this is one where the air valve system was originally. If we take a look at the 3D 
um, model here. I happen to have this open up in Team Center Visualization. You can see that there was originally a nose um, here that was multiple parts. And there was six different parts that were part of this nose. And these were all being made with injection molding before. Um, but we uh, wanted to redesign this, take that part and change it over, merge those function, those pieces together and make a single 3D printable part. And that's what's actually been done here. There's a new part that's been defined that is a single piece part with all of those. And it's been designed within NX, uh, NX top, uh, topology optimization. And as I can see here, if I take a look at this, I actually have this part here brought into an NX additive manufacturing session. It's loaded right from Team Center. Um, it's it's uh, on the fly as the design engineer has made those design changes. It's available right here in NX uh, additive manufacturing. And I can actually go ahead and prepare this for building. The data is all integrated together. I can go right into my 3D printing mode and tell it that I want to, you know, if I want to pattern the part in there, or if I want to go ahead and create supports and add support geometry in here to be able to print this. As anybody who's familiar with 3D printing knows, you've got to be able to have some of the stuff that hangs out in the space. You just can't print in open air. You need to be able to have support material on that. So I can actually go in and just generate support material. Uh, and NX is able to treat this geometry. In this case, it was generated in NX, but really NX doesn't really care. If this could have come in as a step file, it could come in as a point cloud. NX can handle that geometry. We have some best in class type features for working with third party CAD because we do believe it in being an open ecosystem that we can bring in these files from any vendor, whether it was designed at NX or whether it was designed in other systems. And we then are able to generate support material for it and go ahead and slice it, send it to a printer or export out a 3MF or a STL file and take those same type of files and put it into your existing 3D printing system if we're not a printer that NX can directly talk to. Um, the, the support generation things, a functionality like that is using the materialized magic uh, support generation system that's in, been embedded directly into NX. So we're using a, some of that industry best in class type of support logic and algorithms that, that generate the support material. But when it comes into NX, it is live geometry that I can edit, that I can move around. I can, uh, it's, it's all intelligent uh, support material generated within NX. So as I've made this design change here and I've gotten this new file with this merged part over in Active Workspace, I go ahead and jump back over there to Active Workspace. You know, I have a design change that's come in and here's my new part uh right here this is that part file that i was just looking at in nx i can take that new part in and process it into my mbon and replace the old part and then go right on into the process planning in easy plan where i'm able to go in and go to the operations i can revise the operations and change the instructions to put the new part in instead of the old one so the data flows through for an engineering change like that seamlessly with the one continuous digital thread from one end to the other. Sure, so maybe maybe you could talk a little bit about explaining the need for more than one bill, one uh, MBOM and a, a bill of process. You know, one of the things that we really wanna understand how to do is um, manufacture across different plants or across different assembly lines. And sure. uh, one of the real strengths of our product, I think, is the ability to, uh, to create these multiples of the different bill of process and bill of uh, manufacturing bomb. So maybe you could explain that a little bit, why that's such an important thing, how to do it, that kind of thing. Sure. Well, for people who work in manufacturing, um, you know, sometimes in one plant to another, you may have more than one more than one line or you may have more than one process. Maybe you've got different equipment together. Um, maybe at one one plant you have, a, 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 you know, one one sealant uh, uh, injection system and another one you have a, you have a different one. So that's where multiple bill of processes would come into, into play because of the needs of what, what equipment you have attached there, you would be able to build multiple bill of processes in, within the system. And the system is able to manage those, those multiple pieces and keep them linked together. As for bill of materials like this, um, everything from different organizations of the parts, maybe in one assembly you consume 
in in the first station you consume everything in the base all in the first station and in later in in, in your other line you consume different parts um it can be organized differently depending on what you need and team center may like i sh already showed earlier just creating a new sub assembly within an mbom is extremely easy just creating a new child here but from uh uh, basic standpoint if I just want to be able to create new parts I can go right in here in active workspace and build new files um, build new changes on the fly and, and uh, now right now I happen to be in a uh, design engineer mode uh, I but I can go into my work package and go ahead and bring it up here and I can see the data that is associated here and uh, the the 3d viewers and things like that but i can also build and define actually if i want to go over here to home let me bring up the managing the work package here that you can see it as i look at oh i need to look for work packages it's actually an easy plan that would be my problem i'm looking at them. i'm looking at core active workspace instead of easy plan that was my mistake uh, I can actually see in this work package that for this environment, I'm building that, that ventilator and I'm using this bill of process. Well, maybe in a different plan, I want to use a different bill of process or a different product. I, I, it's just that easy to be able to build between them. And I can actually define if I don't want to build with that one, I can build a new and add a new product here, pick what product I want to build and add it right into the work package here on the fly and be able to build the instructions for just that one. And this is really critical for those customers that need to be able to support multiple multiple environments, multiple processes, uh, to be able to control and manage those different processes and plants and process structure, depending on, on what their requirements are. Sure, yeah, I mean, some examples that I have run into in the past are things like uh, bar sealers, Sometimes you'll have more than one piece of equipment on a particular line that you need to have uh, two different validations and two different work instructions based on the different equipment that's out there. Or another example was uh, oftentimes I've had to stock parts, different sub-assemblies in the, in the plant just because of, you know, inventory needs, that kind of thing. So uh, good examples of, you know, the type of thing, any other... Just, just sorry, I, I, I lost track of my train of thought initially there briefly. But here's a really good example. And this is the one I meant to I meant to answer you there with uh, the in this case here building that part. We said that you know you can prepare the build area. We can build the nose using additive manufacturing, and we separate it from the build plate. And this is an additive manufacturing build process. But depending on what type of printer you use, you may have different types of operations for removing the part or cleaning the part up different types of inspection and depending on what printer you ran it on may vary and you can document a bill of process for each of those different pieces of equipment that would be used to build that process is a perfect example of that yeah so there um oftentimes uh, we see this in the field quite a bit is uh integration with erp systems this this whole idea of having multiple manufactured uh bill of uh, bill of materials Kind of lends itself well to the uh, integration with ER, ERP package. I don't know if you've run into that in the past, but um, uh, any thoughts with regard to e ERP integration? Well, absolutely. Um, we have several uh, different integrations, quite a few different integrations that we've done. We have a, a layer um, that's referred to as the T4 architecture. It was um, originally a, a company called TSIS that was integrated in, integrated into Siemens, purchased and acquired. And what they do in that in that infrastructure team is they integrate to ERP systems. Um, and between ERP systems and, and execution systems like Somatic IT and our CAMSTAR um, uh, execution systems, MES systems. And so they're able to take this as through, a, through this integration layer, which has certified interface layers with systems like SAP and Oracle, or even with um, the T4 EA system, they can integrate to any legacy or most legacy ERP systems. And that, that interface layer translates between, you know, a bill of process in Team Center into say a routing or a, a, a part header that, that, that is put into something like SAP. And it translates these operations from Team Center into SAP operations. But for anybody who knows, who's worked with ERP, sometimes the needs of ERP don't match the same as, as what your PLM system does. Some ERP systems understand 
date-based change. Some of them understand revision control and access control of that type. And other ones don't. So those interface layers give us ways of moving, the, of, of transacting the data from Team Center PLM into the ERP system. And it basically is, is, is that interface layer, that intermediate layer in between that translates between the two and makes them talk to each other. And you know, sometimes there's difficulties with that. Sometimes uh, the, the the two are just speaking two different languages. Your your parts may not don't don't always necessarily structure the same way. So it, it can be really depend upon what ERP system you're talking to. That might be something that we'd want to do a deeper dive in in another session because it can get that can get into a, some pretty deep subjects. Yeah, yeah, sure. Be good to have a whole half an hour just to talk around all the different options and difficulties that people run into. Really nice to have these abstractions so you have the possibility of, of doing a, a clean integration between ERP. I just have a question from the field too. It says, how do you adjust change management and risk management for the change designs within that workflow? So I think what they're really driving at here is you know, do we have a change management? Do we want to change uh, manufacturer bomb or the BOP? Um, how do we manage changes as we uh, as we execute this in the field? Right? We don't want it to be uncontrolled and just have people changing things, you know, willy nilly out there. So, so change management is integrated in. Again, this is something that can go. You can go a whole session on its own. But change management is integrated in with Active Workspace and Easy Plan in our Team Center environment. Um, even all the way down to the NX level, where you are able to define changes as part of the system. Um, I don't think I have the menu, the button right here configured in my workspace right now because in this environment I wasn't using it. But you can define a change package as part of your data here and associate your EBOM changes, your MBOM changes, and ride it through in the system, including um, notifications to people through Team Center workflow, which notifies them that a, hey, a change is in process. In this case here, you can see I do have an, an active change here. I just don't have the button configured right now to show creating a new change. Sure, sure. I, and I'll just add to that as well. If we, in one of our previous sessions, we talked about uh, intelligent design control and design control includes uh, the integration of risk management with the product requirements and so if you look at one of those previous sessions what we talked about was uh, creating a set of controls that runs all the way from user needs down through product requirements and then finally production controls and so as you're uh, doing these changes and you're evaluating the changes both from a a process validation perspective and from a uh, product control perspective, you'd want to run that through the risk management as well. And if there are any changes to controls, you'd want to make sure that those get included in the change management uh, at, at the team center level as well. So uh, definitely want to think a little bit about um, integration with your risk management system related to the products as well. So um, I guess the last question, maybe we'll take one more question and then we'll uh, uh, finish up for the day. Uh, I guess the question, and this may be related, says where does the approval layer lie when an engineering update flows from the EPOM to the MBOM? So I guess uh, what you were just saying a second ago is that that's really at the team center level, huh? Yeah, the, um, typically the way we, we tend to implement this within, within Team Center would be workflows um, that, that flow through, and I don't, have a, I don't have an example here in this environment, but the, um, as far as you can see the workflows that are flowing through here and you can see the data, and as it goes to people's inboxes, they are able to see and approve those tasks, approve the design changes, they can review all of the data, opening them up, from whether it's opening the data live into something like Annex here, or if they're uh, you know more of a management user, they can view the 3D and query and measure and things like that right there in the viewer, whether it's in this mockup like I have here, or the viewer that is integrated into Active Workspace. So they can see that data and, and provide approval, sign off, or send feedback back to the design engineer or the manufacturing engineer. Sure. All right, well, we'll uh, go ahead and end the session today. I think that answers most of the questions that were out there. Uh, I'm gonna show my screen one more time. Uh, just to give you a sense, <clears throat> uh, the Operational Excellence uh, webinar series is for four uh, different sessions. This is number two, June 11th, and next one is going to be around manufacturing si simulation. So we're hoping to do a social distancing example of how to build out a line and show spacing between your different manufacturing uh, folks. 
So uh, look forward to that session, and hopefully uh, you can spend your next half an hour at lunch with us uh, next week. So thanks so much for attending, and we look forward to seeing you the next time around. Thanks a lot.